Everybody say blind spots. There you go. We started this series last week about this man named Samson. How many of you have heard the story of Samson before? And he was, uh, you know, a great story about a guy who God used in great ways, gave him great strength. And at the same time, Samson had some blind spots. And last week we talked about a blind spot that he, that he was missing and we can miss sometimes is that we have hidden potential. And that every person here has potential that God wants to use. And so we have to be aware of these blind spots. And how many of you know when you're driving on the freeway or whatever, wherever it is, is that you all have blind spots. When you're driving, even though you have mirrors and you can look to the left and to the right, is that you can look out that way, but you can't see 360 degrees around you. And so what we have to do is continue to look and try to be aware of what blind spots maybe in my life, then I need to remove so that I get the full life that God has designed for me. And so we're looking at this guy named Samson who had everything going for him. He had great power that God had given him. And sometimes if you look at uh, Google or you look at different images or maybe you grew up in Sunday school and they had the little flannel board, you know what I mean? And you put things on there and it always gave this impression that Samson was huge and buff like the pastor, right? It, it, um, <laughs> someone said, which pastor? That ain't right. Anyway, I, uh, we're going to deal with you later. Anyway, uh, so So, um, but you see that. And the truth of the matter is, I don't believe that that's really what happened because I think it was just, Samson was this normal dude, just this guy, every, everyday guy. And the reason I believe that is he wasn't maybe so buff is because they were constantly in search as enemies were of what's the secret to his strength. Because if it was him being so huge and buff, it wouldn't be a secret. It'd be very obvious. And so how that gives us encouragement is simply this, is that God has something great for every one of us. You don't have to be a superstar. You don't have to be an all-star. But it's the power of God and the great things God wants to do inside each and every one of us that makes a difference. And here is Samson. His strength, the touch of God on his life, was in his physical body. And so Samson, it's real important that we see here, he had so many blind spots, which we all do, but he caved into those. These blind spots ultimately left into his downfall to where he was literally blind and he had his eyes removed, they were plucked out. Now the source of his strength was obviously God's spirit, but the way that this strength was maintained, it was maintained through this vow that he had made, it's called a Nazarite vow. And a Nazarite vow was simply one who was separated. That's what Nazarite means. And so in order to maintain this vow before the Lord and have this unity with him, there was three things that you couldn't do if you're separating yourself to God as a Nazarite. One is, is that you couldn't cut your hair. Another one is, is that you couldn't drink strong drink, alcohol, etc. And the last thing was, is that you couldn't be around anything dead. And as long as, as long as he did this, as long as he was faithful to that, He continued to see God's power, supernatural strength. He was able to, it says that he ripped a a lion apart with his bare hands. It says that in in, uh, one area of his life that there was an army that came against him and he killed a thousand people in one day. And I just believe what the Bible says that that really happened. That's the kind of supernatural strength that he had. But he had blind spots. And one blind spot that we're going to talk about today is the sense of entitlement the sense of entitlement, and we're going to learn how we can forfeit that and not allow the sense of entitlement to rule our lives. How many of you have seen the sense of entitlement just very obvious and up close at times? You've seen it either in in the mirror or or you've, you've seen it with others, but you're kind of familiar with it. Anyway, so... I, I bet, let me, let me just see by a show of hands, how many of you have loaned money to someone before? You have trusted someone. Okay, so you have this poor wretched soul that comes to you and says, hey, uh, you know, can I, can I borrow some money having a hard time? And some of us here, maybe you've trusted someone and you've loaned them $20 or 50 or 100 or whatever it is, five and et cetera. And, and usually what you do is you make a plan. Hey, when I get paid, I'm going to pay you back. And so uh, I don't know if you've experienced this before, but that day would come and you don't see them. 
and you don't know where they are, all of a sudden you begin to hear how they're going shopping at the mall, right? And they're just, you know, using that card up and they're just paying and spending their money. And then they're actually out treating friends to dinner. I mean, they're being so generous. They even call you up and they want to take you out to lunch, you know? And it's like, no, no, you're not taking me out to lunch. That's my money, right? I'm entitled. And some of you are like, I so want to hit them in the head with a chair. No, I'm just kidding. But we're entitled to that. And, and here's the thing with um, being entitled in that way is that's something that is, it's mine already. It's mine and I am entitled to that. But it's a totally different story when we're looking at the sense of entitlement. That I believe I am entitled to things even if they're not mine, I think that I should have them. And the spirit of, and you can follow along in the notes today with the handout that you got or on our app, you can fill the notes out there. But the spirit of a sense of entitlement is that I should have what I want. That I should have what I want. If I want this thing, if, I, if it's something that I truly desire, I should get it. And even with the mentality of looking at it like this is that, I think this kind of creeps in, is that I am owed. Someone, something, they owe me. So we'll go through life. I should get what I want. They owe me. I, I, think, I think life owes me. I think people, people owe me. I, you know, I, I, I should have the, the notice and the, the acknowledgement. I should have the raise. I, I should have the relationship. People owe me. I, I owe myself. And sometimes we even go to, a, to another place to where we may not say this, but maybe deep down or in our mind we think, God owes me. God, you said this, and this isn't happening. You owe me. You have to. And so we have this sense of entitlement that if I want it, I should have it. And so this can creep in and be really damaging. And it was for, here we're looking at Samson. It was damaging to him in his life. And because of this, he started down this path of being entitled and just taking whatever he wanted for himself. And it hurt him dearly in the end. And really a, a simple definition that just kind of makes it clear for us when it comes to a sense of entitlement is believing that you deserve favorable living conditions and treatment. You're just under this belief that I deserve that. I have that. I should get that. But where does it come from? Where does this kind of mentality creep up and where does it come from in our lives? It comes from areas like this. Is that all these years I haven't been able to have this, so I should have it. Or I've suffered, I've gone through pain, and now I'm going to get what I want. I've had people mistreat me, and they're not going to get away with it anymore. I'm entitled, I'm going to get them back. Or, I've worked hard for this, so now I'm going to take. Or, I've done for you, you have to do for me, I want that. And so we get caught in these different mentalities that naturally, everyone here naturally, we're going to have this sense of entitlement. And it's just important for us to be aware of this because it's going to be a blind spot that hinders you. It's going to be a blind spot that hinders me in my life. It's going to be a blind spot that hinders and can damage the future you and everybody wants a brighter you, a future you that is a great life. Nobody here, but here is Samson. He destroys his future you because he didn't see this blind spot and he continued to walk right through it and live out this blind spot. And it caused, it caused accidents, it caused pain, it caused destruction. And this is what I want you to do today. This, this is real important. Look at me for a second. Is that the only way that you and I are going to grow from a message is that we do one thing for ourselves, is that we are completely honest. Yeah. It's going to be very hard for you and very hard for me to come in and hear something from the Bible that God is speaking, that the preacher is saying, that can help us to apply. It's going to be very hard for me to see any change in God work in my life if I won't just be willing to say, I think that's me. Or 
or I do that sometimes. And we don't, and we, we need to be able to allow the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you speak to me on this? Because I don't want this to, I want to be aware and I don't want this blind spot to ruin my life. And then if you want to grow to another level, it's not just being able to be honest and open hearted with yourself, but it's also being able to say, I need to make some changes. I need to make some corrections. I can't, I can't stay here. I don't want this. I want to move forward. And that is so important because when you and I do that, the possibilities of blind spots ruining us, they begin to decrease. And so today we're going to look at Samson and we're going to learn from his mistakes and his failures because I'd rather learn from someone else's mistakes and failures than to continually do it on my own. Someone say amen. So look at Judges chapter 14 and you can read it in your hard copy Bible like me. Or you can follow along on the app or on the website or in your mobile device. You can get it done, all right? Are you guys with me this morning? All right. All right, look at this here in Judges chapter 14. It says, Samson went down to Timnah, kind of like the devil went down to Jordan. Anyway, Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah he saw one of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, the Philistines were another nation, and here's where it was bad is because each nation identified with a different religion. And so here is what they were told is you're not to uh, be united with another religion or anything connected in that way with another God. And that's why, like, even in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, it says, do not be unequally Yo, don't be unequally yoked. Be it with someone who is in the same direction, the same uh, relationship with God moving in the same direction, okay? So he shouldn't have done that. In verse 2, it says... Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw one of the daughters of the Philistines at Timnah. Hello. Now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, is there not a woman among the daughters of your relatives? Now it's not, okay, it's the, the, the family of community, okay, um, of, of your relatives or among all our people that you must go to take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines. But Samson said to his father, get her for me, for she is right in my eyes. Now, I don't know about you, especially some of us kind of older generation. I don't think I'm older yet, but I'm on the cusp of it, okay? But we, I don't think we could get away with talking to our parents like that. How many of you are like, nope, couldn't do it, right? And we couldn't get away with it. And today it's, it's different. We live in a time where um, we just put Johnny on timeout, right? We have timeouts. But when I was growing up, we had like different outs. We had like knockout, right? We had blackout. And if you didn't like it, you could get, you could get out, right? And it was a totally different thing. But here is Samson with the sense of entitlement. I should have it because I want it. And he goes to this place called Timnah, this city, which actually the definition of this city is called forbidden. That he went to this place, he's taking a forbidden path in life and he's getting away from the things that he should be doing and it just leads to destruction. And I want you to know this, is that there are a lot of times where there are things that are forbidden in your life for your good. They're forbidden because it's going to lead to destruction. But here is, here is Samson. He doesn't care. He pushes through. And it doesn't matter if it's forbidden. He wants to have what he wants. He wants favorable living conditions. He wants to have the advantage. He wants the benefits. He wants to be able to have everything and anything that he wants, even the stuff that is forbidden. Now, here's the deal. When we have this kind of uh, sense of uh, entitlement, and we're running through and we, and we want to go after the things that are forbidden and, and everything says no, but we're just saying, yes, I want it anyway. I'm going to take it. Is that we begin to develop a, a, like a fighting spirit inside of us. That everything is in the way or against me. And so we take, end up taking on these different attitudes or behaviors that actually we begin to self-destruct because we have this fighting inside of us. It's kind of like the, with the three, these three wise men, they said, you got to fight for your right to fart. Anyway, anyway I, I don't know if they're wise. That's the Beastie Boys. Anyways, way, way, way back. But 
But we have this thing in us that we want, we, we just naturally, we begin to have this fighting spirit because it's, it's mine and I should have what I want. But the truth is, and I want us to really get this today, is fighting with your hands, it forfeits favor. Fighting with your hands, making it happen on your own, and you're trying to pull it in to have the advantage life, to have the better life. You're just going to forfeit it and push it away because it's not going to be found in your hands. It's kind of like when you're talking to someone on the phone uh, and it's customer service for a company. How many of you just love those phone calls, right? We hate it. And it seems like we always get the person who does not want to help us. They're just waiting for lunch, you know, and clock out and they want to go do their thing. They're not very helpful. And so what do we do? We get upset. We start raising our voice. We start kind of getting a little more firm or stern, and we're, we're getting really upset, and it's this sense of entitlement begins to creep up. And so now some of you, 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 some of you begin to have a little bit of entitlement to where we start telling them what's going to happen and how they're going to do it, and go get me someone else, and this is what I want. And what you're doing is, is you're actually biting the hand, the only hand that can feed you. And we're forcing, we want to have it. And it's a better way to be able to be humble and, and receive than it is to fight and to take. And that was Samson. Samson was fighting to take and he was pushing things aside. He was violating relationships. He was, he was um, crossing boundaries. He was doing things that were destructive. He was complicating his life. He was making life harder because I should have what I want. And so today we're going to look at five signs, five things that you and I can pick up in the life of Samson and then in this scenario where we can see exactly how the sense of entitlement showed up in his life and how we can protect it and not have it ourselves. The first one is this, is deadly lust. Everybody say lust. Oh, come on. Everybody say lust. All right. Um, it, it's it's this lust inside of us, and it's not only like what a uh, sexual lust or a physical lust, but it's this deep desire and craving for what you want. It's an unhealthy desire. Here he was craving and lusting. It said this two times. He says, I saw homeboy was taking double looks at these girls. Okay. He, he, he was, he was lusting. And because he was lusting, he was overstepping the boundaries of we're not supposed to be with this group. But because he was lusting, it was like nothing's going to get in the way and nothing is going to stop me. And that became the death of him later on in his life. It was a deadly lust. The next thing that he had that we're going to see is he had a demanding attitude. We can see a demanding attitude. He tells his parents... This, this is crazy. He tells his parents, now go get her for me. Go, he not only says it once, he says it twice. I said, go get her for me. And he has this demanding type of spirit in him that remember, I'm owed. That whatever I want, I should have. And he began to be a bully, and sometimes inside of us, we can have the sense of entitlement to where we begin to be a bully, and we start demanding, this is what I want. We got in this marriage, and you should be like this. Or I got in this job, and they told me this. They need to you know, follow through or whatever, and we get it with God, and we demand things of God, and we have this demanding attitude, and this is exactly what Samson was looking like, and none of us want to look like this blind spot, have this blind spot like Samson, and develop that inside of our lives. He had this deadly lust. He had this demanding type of attitude. And then he had some damaging disregard. Damaging disregard. His parents, who love him, his parents who had heard from an angel that he was going to be the deliverer, that God was going to use him in an amazing way, his parents come to him because he wants to marry a, a Philistine, which you're not supposed to unite yourself with. And they come to him and say, is there not a better way? They're trying to help him live wise. And there are people that love him and they're saying, wait, Samson, this isn't going to be good. This isn't going to work out well. 
How many times have we had people in our lives who love us? They want our life to be better and they're trying to give us advice and we just ignore them. No, I should have it because I want it. And we push people out and we'll even kind of make them the enemy. You just don't want me to be happy. And so we disregard them and now we begin to have relationships that become damaged and divided. And we push people out of our lives that could really be there to help us. And so he's damaging that. He's disregarding what, we're say, what they're saying. And then all of a sudden, and we can develop this too with this blind spot, is we can have destructive anger. Destructive anger. It's okay to be angry at times. It's not okay to have destructive anger. And here he is on a couple different occasions with a couple different phrases. He is saying things twice. He is being adamant. He is being impatient. He's being forceful. I imagine he was somewhat throwing a fit. And we can get into this place because we can be frustrated with life and where we're at. Or we can want revenge towards other people. I deserve that. I should have that. They did to me. They deserve that. I deserve that. And we demand that we should be able to do that. Or we, or we, we, we're bitter at people. Or we're resentful or, or we, we just feel like we need to get back. And we have this anger that builds up. And why didn't they, why didn't they promote me? Why didn't they give me the opportunity? And all of a sudden, this sense of entitlement creeps up. And you know, we really forfeit the favorable life, the one that has advantages, because we're trying to do it and take it all on our own. And this is exactly what Samson was doing. And it was ugly. And this blind spot was crippling him. And if that wasn't enough, then you get to a place to where you're deserving privileges. You're deserving privileges. That I should have it. He says, check this out. He says this. They're trying to get him to see things a different way. And he says, no, she's right in my eyes. You see it. How many times have we heard, no, that's good for you, but this is okay for me. And he is getting to this place to where I can even cross boundaries because this is so right. And if you're a Christian here today, we can fall into this trap to where we prefer our preferences over God's principles. And we give ourselves permission to cross boundaries because I deserve it. I haven't had it yet. I want a husband. I want a wife. I want the career. I want the calling. I want, I want, I want, and I should have it. And we just say, well, this is right in my eyes. I'm going to go after it. And that's where Samson ended up. And things just got bad. And this blind spot took control of his life. And this guy who was so strong and had all this potential God was going to use, he was beginning to cripple himself with this blind spot. And it'll happen to you. It'll happen to me. We're gonna, we don't want to make life harder. I don't know about you, but I want, I want God to be working with me. I want to be working with God. I don't want to be working against God. Yeah. No one here does. And so I've got to remove this, this sense of entitlement and understanding this, this is so important because we can't fight with our hands. We can't fight with our hands to get fa favor. Because favor is found in the hands of the Father. Yep. Favor for your life, check this out. The advantages of life, the blessings of life, the benefits. Do you know that there are so many benefits to allowing God to just take control of your life? Do you know that life can get so much better and that we have a good heavenly father that knows your deepest desires, that knows your hurts, your pains, the things that, are, that you're going through. But so many times we get a sense of entitlement and I'll take it for myself. I'll give the cure. I'm going to go ahead and make myself feel better because I should have it if I want it. There's a story about this guy, this parable that Jesus told called the prodigal son. And the issue with this prodigal son was he had a very strong sense of entitlement to where he goes to his father one day and when his father's about to uh, pass away, he, he is supposed to receive an inheritance before his father even passes away. He goes to him and he begins to demand to get the inheritance. 
I want my portion right now. And he tells him what he should be given to him. He tells him about the inheritance. And finally, his father just gives him the inheritance because there are some times when you want to do your own thing, God will allow you to go ahead and do your own thing. And this prodigal son takes it and he goes and he lives the way he wants. He has all of his desires and all of his pleasures, partying and everything else, and he comes to a place to where he wastes it all. And it says that he gets to a point to where he's in a pig pen. And he's in this pig pen, he's lost everything, and he's, he's just sitting here working and doing all that he can to stay alive. And then if the thought comes to him and he says this, is that, oh, if I could just be a slave in my father's house. Oh, if I just didn't even care about entitlement and what I get. If I could just be there and just have security and be where, be where things are okay. And he makes a decision one day. I'm going to go ahead and go back home. And as he's heading home, it says that his father saw him from afar off. And his father began to pursue him. And not only that, his father's telling everybody else, look, I want you to get the robe ready. I want you to get him a ring. I want to plan a feast. I, we're going to celebrate what he's here because we serve a good God that just loves us, that wants to give us favor. We don't have to fight for it. We don't have to throw a fit for it. We don't have to have attitude and make demands and say we deserve stuff and take privileges that aren't there. We have a good father. We have a father that wants to, for you to benefit and have healing. Some of you want restoration. We have a father who wants to give that to you. We have a father who wants to promote you. We have a father who wants to give you a new life and take you into a new season. But if we fight and we hold on to it, we ruin it. But man, we've got a good God. I serve a good God. I serve a God who loves me so much, he sent his son to die on the cross for me because he says, I want to be good to you. I want to be good to you. I have a friend of mine over this last year, he and I have been keeping in touch quite a bit. We've grown really close. Because this last year, life has been cruel to him. Life has been cruel to him. There's valuable things in his life and job, just different possessions, things. I mean, there are some things that were going really good for him. They were taken away for him, and it literally was not his fault. It was someone else's. He was betrayed by other people. There were, I, I mean, it was just like one thing after another, and we would talk, and he was so frustrated with life. And I tell you this, if there is anybody that had the right in my mind, and you would probably say so too, to have this sense of entitlement, you would say it's him. You would, you would be okay with it because it's like, yeah, he, he does deserve better than this. I can see why he's demanding this. But for some reason, my friend just, he never got to that place. He just was holding on to God. And I don't know how he did, honestly. I'm like, man, this guy, everything is like falling apart in his life and life has been cruel. And he was never demanding. And I see where he is today. And God has replaced everything. God has restored everything. Things and relationships that were bad, they're even better now because we serve a good God who is kind and loves us and won't leave us the way it is. And we were sitting back and we were having lunch the other day. And I just felt like it was the Holy Spirit telling me this. And I just told him, I said, you know what? God's been good to you even when life hasn't been. And some of us here today, life hasn't been good. But God has never stopped being good to you. Life can treat you like trash. God will always treat you like gold. That will happen. We'll go through it. But let's not get hung up on a sense of entitlement. I've been left out, so I should get in there. Or I should take. And we get angry and, and we disregard people. We push things out and we make things worse. We don't have to. So we got a good father that wants to, he wants to give us favor in all those great things that we truly desire, that life that we want. And there's a scripture I think today we're, we're going to end with that it gives us this new mentality to where we're going to forfeit. We're going to forfeit 
the sense of entitlement and getting things ourselves. And this is a scripture here. It's found in the book of Psalms. It says, depend on the Lord. Trust him. And he will take care of you. Get to a place to where I'm, I'm, I'm taking my hands off. I'm pulling in my dukes. I'm not fighting anymore. I only want what God gives me from now on. And it's a faith thing because I'm depending on the Lord and God, I'm going to trust you. And this is so good because you're going to take care of me. And there's two words I want us to get that we could, if we could just ingrain in our mind, if we could just brand them in our mind, the first one is delay. That you and I delay, would delay gratification. That I, you know, the impulse and the flesh that rises up in you and you want to react a certain way and you want to do, you want to pursue, you want to take because it'll just make me feel good. It won't last, friends. I'm telling you, it won't last long. So we delay the gratification. I'm not going after it because the next thing is this. I'm going to depend. I'm going to depend on the Lord. I'm going to depend on him making my life right. And no longer am I going to go and claim rights and say, I should have this because of. This blind spot isn't going to rule my life. I'm going to be aware of it and I'm going to see God do amazing things in my life. And he wants to do it for you and he wants to do it for me. Friends, God loves you. Whether you're a Christian or not, God loves you. He has an amazing life. And if we can just remove this blind spot and begin to work towards it, whatever that blind spot is or whatever the symptom of it was, let's just begin to work there and say, Holy Spirit, would you, Holy Spirit, would you come in and change me? I just want to give this up. And I don't want this anymore.